And today on the bench I've got a 1980 vintage power amplifier manufactured by HH Electronic. It's the S500D, outputting about 340 watts per channel. Quite a beast. And being a professional power amplifier, it's got these wings for the rack mounting. It's pretty straightforward at the back, just mains in, input one and two, they don't even call it left and right, look. And then you've got the output post set, pretty straightforward. It's 18 and a half kilograms as well, it's quite heavy. And also being professional, the volume knobs are called gain. Very snazzy, eh? It's got a bit of a Sinclair look to it, I think, like the Black Watch. The only tells when this basically works, so it only needs a little service. Uh, but they also want some mod. They want DC protection added, which is something that these never had. And if they went wrong, they went wrong very badly. And <laughs> tended to destroy the speakers. So I think we should power it up and see just how bad it is. Connect the speakers in there. It's a common ground on this one, so no problems. Get a power lead in. Plug the leads in off the signal gen. Oh no, we're a bit short. And on with the power. That's actually quite a good looking amp, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Very pretty. Let's see if we can get any signal out of it. Let's turn the gain up. Yes, look at that. Ah, this knob's a bit crusty. Not a big deal. We shall see how it behaves when we turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds a bit funny. So we'll just pull all the wires out the back. And get it open. Another professional touch, they've colour coded the case screws brown so you don't mix them up. Oh look, 6th of August, it's just had its birthday, it's 42. Ready for the reveal. Very neat. Someone liked cable lacing, didn't they? This wouldn't have been cheap to make, I tell you. Rather intrigued about these uh, unlabeled transistors. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> Need to take the bottom cover off as well, which I think is just going to just fall off, hopefully. Ah, pretty much is. I just noticed this foam on here. It's actually making an airtight seal around these modules so the cooling fans blow straight through the heatsink. Yes, yeah, it's been designed quite smartly. Attention to detail. And I've just spotted just in that gap there, there's actually a thermal switch, and that'll be for the fan. Here we've got the output uh, resistor network, very nicely laid out. And right at the top you can see the input module, all encased, top secret. To put the DC protection in, I'm going to use a UPC1273 chip, uh, and these are quite easily available in kit form. You buy this off eBay for about £7, uh, you have to solder it together. But yeah, don't have to do too much thinking. It does need a 12 volt AC supply. There's no 12 volt AC in here, it's uh, 43 volts. So, I have to add another transformer just to power this up. Tricky part's working out where to mount it, because it's so nicely laid out, I don't want to just bodge it in. Annoyingly, this is designed to connect directly to the speaker output terminals, um, which don't fit on this thing at all. So it's not really great. I don't know if I bought the wrong version, but that's what I've got. So I'm going to have to work out how to mount it, but there doesn't seem to be much room for it uh, and the transformer. Hmm. So my thoughts are maybe to mount it on there, something like that. But then we're a bit close to this bridge rectifier, so yeah, I think I'm going to have to move this back a bit. I can mount this on the front if there's room. Hopefully there is. And then the board, hmm, where can that go? Oh, I see. I can mount this there. That'll fit quite nicely in that position there. Uh, I'm going to have to put some standoffs in because it's going to short out on the chassis. Um, and the only downside is I'd need to put screws in. 
through here. So I'm going to have to drill, oh god, I'm going to have to take the transformer off. Uh, I'm going to have to take it all apart. It looks this quick little shortcut's going to be quite a strip down after all. <laughs> Damn it. These screws are a bit rubbish, I have to say. If they're not rusty, they're made out of soft cheese. This one doesn't, oh god. <laughs> this one's just rounding off. That is knackered. I have to introduce it to my good friend Mr. Makita. <laughs> there we go, a bit more room. Same up here. There's a bit more room to get in. I'm not looking forward to taking this out. No, can I disconnect? Oh, the bridge rectifier is on little fast on push fit connectors. They can just come off. Now, hopefully, this module is going to come out without too much of a fight. So far, so good. That looks promising, doesn't it? Separate this plug. Hopefully, it comes out. And look at that little beauty. Oh, very 70s design, isn't it? Get this bridge rectifier undone. And then we can slacken this transformer off. Okay, now I'm going to lie it down. So I don't need to rip the wires out of everything. Just lift it, just lean it over, just out of the way of the drill. And now I can mount this here and uh, not drill a hole in the transformer. I'm just going to mark these holes because that's where I'm going to mount it. Oh, that's not good. Perhaps I should hold it a bit tighter. No, I did. I'm going to centre pop these. I'm not sure how well it's going to go because I can't get this in the vise. But it's in the hole, isn't it? <laughs> See if the others are any better. from that swore foot with a magnet. Now I can install these plastic standoffs which will give a bit of flexibility as well. <laughs> Just in case my holes aren't that lined up. Screw from this side. Just wind these in. Well, in theory, I can just push the board on. Beautiful. 
now we can put the transformer straight. Except if I put that upside down. Whoops. That on. <laughs> Put it on from this side. Just want to move the bridge rectifier over. Careful that none of the terminals touch anything. Should be good. Just make a little mark on the frame. Oh. <laughs> well there's a mark. We'll just pop the old in at the beginning of that. <laughs> just open the hole up to 4 mil. Countersink it. Perfect. Put that back over there. Put the washer in. My plan for mounting the transformer requires the front fascia to come off. So let's deal with that. The knobs have to come off. And that's about it. And there we are. There's the electroluminescent panel there, hanging by thread at one end. Well the good news is, there's plenty of room. This just slides in, not that it's going to go in this side, it's too big, but I can mark the holes. Dot a little pilot hole, one there, one there. Tap of threading now, actually. So clean this up a bit. Now it's going to be a bit tight in there to solder this up with it bolted down, so I'm going to just put the connections on now. Right, little flying leads.
we've got a little shroud for these for the wires which is a nice touch just thread them through Let's mount the transformer. Before I attach this to the transformer primary, I'm going to stick a fuse in like this. Just a little half amp one. Well that's the power supply sorted for this and I'm just going to finish off the front panel. The pot's a bit long, I don't actually have a tool that will reach and it's a bit recessed. So I'm just going to go with a bit of the old uh, deoxit. As luck would have it, there's slots at the bottom so you can just put the tube straight through. And same up the top. Let's get those little whiz. I prefer to directly clean them, but can't always get at them. Let's put the fascia back on now. Let's put these bits of sponge in. These just sort of prop the uh, electroluminescent strip up. Let's pop that over there. I need more hands, really. Ooh. All the way. <laughs> Now it's time to fit these onto this. This board very helpfully has got all the components labelled up really clearly. Tell you what value they are on everything and even marked on both sides. Good effort. Hmm. So all the parts are here. A few capacitors, diodes, resistors. Not a lot really. I'll show you what the circuit's doing. Um, it's quite simple, all built around this chip. Um, you've just got an AC input, it needs to be AC so it can pick up the power lost instantly which you won't do if you let it off the DC from the uh, capacitors, it'll take a while to decay. So important things to note, it's got an AC detect which is actually DC by the time it gets to here, this is just half wave rectified. The audio inputs actually picked up from the terminals here, so you've got a left and right in, passed through this mixing network here. And just looks at the DC offset, so if there's a DC present on there that's big enough it's going to shut this thing down. Ultimately the output is this uh, relay, so it just closes the relay when it's happy. There's an on detect delay, so when it turns on it charges this capacitor up through here, gets to a threshold, then it'll close the relay, as long as this is good. Um, everything else, that's pretty straightforward. Well now I've got an opportunity to use this PCB assembly jig, that was given to me by my mentor when I was an apprentice. Not been used in a while. Does anyone know this brand? Are they still going? Teleway, made in South Africa? Hmm. So we'll get this opened up there and just mount the board on it. Just like that. Now I can just start putting the components in. So this resistor, 100k. There's one up there. And 
another one down here. Neat those all up a little bit. My pet hate is wonky components. Looks okay. Because they threw hole plating so good on this, we could just solder them all from the top. But I'll show you how this device works. We just close this lid down, close the latch on the bottom. If it'll close, there we go. And spin it over. Well, the legs are in the way. We'll soon fix that. It's a bit easier now. I can split that round again and do the latch and put more components on. Now we can fit the little chip. Now we can pull these capacitors in, they're all the same value, makes it nice and easy. And we might as well put the little terminal block in, they're all about the same size. They're a bit tight aren't they? Might put this a bit more horizontal, just to encourage these to sit straight. Not sure how it's going to handle this relay, it's quite a bit taller, it's quite chunky. But we'll try it. Oh, look at that, no problem at all. Well, there's quite a divot in there, isn't there? <laughs> Let's just get this soldered in. These pins, <laughs> there's quite a lot of copper here, so it's going to take a while to. Uh, Get the heat into these properly. I might as well do these, even if they're not connected to anything. Well, that's about it. And here we are. Pretty much finished. Be a good idea to test this before I fit it in the amp. Just going to screw in a couple of little bits of wire just so I can clamp onto these a bit easier. So that one would be the ground side, although this is AC going in, um, it's half wave rectified and doesn't actually use AC. So I'm going to go with just the bench power supply DC. The relay's 24 volts so that's a good indication of what we need. So I'm gonna check one channel at a time. There's one. There we go, that's on. So that's connected the speakers after about 10 seconds of power up. It's a bit excessive I think, but no, nah, plays it safe. What we need to do is check that it actually responds to a DC offset. Now I've read the data sheet, that, well data sheet, I read the advert that it came with 
and it reckoned about 1.5 volts was the um, offset voltage to put in. So I'm just going to wind this up now, 10 millivolts at a time. There we go. And that's tripped out. Good. It's not instant, but you know. Let's try it at a higher voltage, see if it is quicker. So if I turn that output off, let's just scroll this up a bit. Let's say put like 10 volts in or so, 12 volts. And we can see that the relay is powered back on, 20 milliamps, that's the current when the relay is powered up. Let's see how quickly it reacts. Oh, a lot quicker. Let me just check the other channel. Wait for that to reset. Just gone, there we go. Now I'm just going to put this is 1.5 volts on here. That's working great. Just swap these leads over. Give us a negative voltage. Perfect. Let's let it reset. Try this on. There we go. I think that's it. It's ready to go in. Just going to solder the output um, wires onto here. It'll be a bit easier to do <laughs> when it's out of the amplifier. Same with the other side. Now I can put the input wires in, one there, and one there, and not to forget the ground wire. So these are the output wires going to the speaker terminals, so I'm just going to do a bit of cable lacing there just to tidy it up, make it blend in with the rest of the amp. job in the town. <laughs> this is ready to fit now. I'm just going to unscrew the old speaker wires because they're a bit um, <laughs> useless now. And one of the grounds can come off. That one. Let's put the ground one on. And this speaker terminal here. It's a snug fit these are. I've given these modules a clean up and a dust in, but there's really nothing wrong with them, so they're going straight back in. I'll just get a screwdriver through there, just to locate it. Another one in the back.
just reconnect the speaker wire up to here and the same here terminal 23 it is let's get these sockets on now the back plate's off it's actually a bit easier to work with these Stereo selector switch in. These screws are really awkward. Right buried up there, which is in the way. I'm trying to get a washer on. And then a nylon nut. And that missing bolt, I'm afraid, going metric. Got my spanner stuck. Come on. It's time to test it. <laughs> Will anything go wrong? Okay, power on. There we go. <laughs> Looks pretty perfect to me. It's all it up, no dramas. At least it's no worse. Oh, we've got the fans starting to uh, move a little bit. It's a promising sign. And what about you, lazy? Move. Anyway, let's just check what it does when you turn it off. Should be perfect now. Well, that actually went to plan. Perfect. So, put the covers on it next. That wiring really blends in well. I'm pleased with that. Well that's the mod complete, works beautifully. You have to wait for it to turn on though, that's <laughs> about 10 seconds. Come on, there we go. Well I'm pleased with how that's gone, perfect silence. So there we are, an ant mod that works as intended. <laughs> Impressive, <laughs> catch you next time.